All right, so let's go ahead and get to the word on this morning. I'm going to look at one verse for right now, one verse um, for right now. That's going to be Psalm 27, verse 14. Psalm 27, verse 14. Psalm 27, verse 14. Very familiar text to many. We're going to break it down on today. We're going to break it down on today. Psalm 27, verse 14. All right, it says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. If you're taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic, hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait. Grace Center, if you are honest, you will admit that for the most part, you hate waiting. If you're completely honest with yourself, you will admit that you hate waiting. Um, we hate waiting in long lines at sporting events. We hate waiting to hear back from potential employers once we have done the interview. Uh, we hate waiting to hear back from the doctor when we have taken certain tests. We, A lot of us, we just simply hate waiting. You see, here in the text, David here, uh, he encourages those who follow the Lord to wait on him. For those of us who, who follow God, David is talking to us. And he's encouraging us to wait on God. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's a slight debate on the time in the life of David when he wrote this psalm, but it doesn't really matter. What we do know is that David wrote it and he's encouraging God's people, okay? So let's look at it, let's break it down, all right? Uh, the word wait here, what does wait mean? Well, wait means, watch this, to look for, to hope or to expect, okay, wait. Uh, it means to look for, to hope or to expect. Um, so here you have David telling God's people to look for God, to hope in God and to expect God to show up. Let me say that again. He's telling God's people, you and I, right? He's telling us to look for God, to hope in God, and to expect God to show up, okay? So let's discuss the first one here when he's talking about looking for God, all right? You see, when you are in distress, when you are in trouble, who do you turn to first? What do you do first when you have found yourself in a situation that you cannot get out of? Who do you turn to first? Um, do you go read your favorite self-help books from your favorite authors? Do you call that friend who uh, they think they know everything about anything? Who do you turn to first when you are needing something from God? Here, David is telling us, God's people, those who follow God, he's saying what you need to do, you need to look for God. Okay, look for him. Um, don't don't just place your trust in others, but look for God. 
Now, it's, 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 there's nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong with um, you know, calling others and asking their wisdom on certain things, asking for advice, getting wise counsel. That's biblical. Okay. But who do you turn to first before you go to those individuals to get the wise counsel in which you are seeking? Who do you turn to first? David is telling us, he's encouraging us to look for God. Okay. And next up, let's, let's discuss hope. Okay. Let's discuss hope. What is hope? Well, you see, hope is always future tense. It's always future tense. In other words, it hasn't happened yet. It's in the future. But although it hasn't happened yet, you're not giving up and quitting just because it hasn't happened. No, you, you still have hope. You're believing that one day it will manifest. You're believing that one day that door will open. You're believing that one day that promotion will come. You're believing that one day that person that you've been praying for over and over again, that one day they will receive Jesus Christ. You're believing that one day they will turn their lives over and make a change in their life one day. All right. You're believing in that. You have you have hope in that. It hasn't happened yet. It's in the future, but yet you're hoping for it. You believe in God for it. Hasn't manifested. As of right now, today, nothing is on the radar that gives you the signals that is going to happen at any moment. But yet, you have hope. Hasn't happened, but you haven't lost your hope. In the words of Jesse Jackson, you are keeping hope <laughs> alive. Hasn't happened, but you are making sure that the hope does not die. You're hoping that the hope that you have within you does not just fade away. You have hope and you haven't killed the hope in which you do have. Let me say this. You have placed your hope in someone that can keep you until that happens. Let me say that again. You have placed your hope in someone that can keep you until that happens. Whatever your that is, you believe that God will keep you until that happens, until that will manifest itself in your life. And isn't it great that we can place our hope in someone that can help us when we need help? We can place our trust in God. We can place our hope in him. It hasn't happened, but you can place your hope in him. It's something about Placing your hope in someone that can do something about your situation. A lot of times, you know, with these different religions out there, some of the gods that they serve are dead. Okay. Some of those false gods that they serve are dead. In other words, they can't do a thing about their situation. And then you have others. You have others who worship um, these so-called walking gods among us, these people, and they treat them like gods. But guess what? They can't do anything for you. Only the almighty God, the one God, um, he's the one that can do something about your situation. He's the one that you can place your hope in. He's the one that you can believe in to do something, no matter what you are going through, no matter how, how, how dire it may look, how dark it may seem. The God that we serve can do something 
about what you are going through. Now, let's look at the next one here. And that's expect. Okay, expect. What is expect? Well, expect is believing that it will happen. So you looked for God. You're placing your hope in God. But now you expecting God to show up. <laughs> uh, you're expecting that thing to happen. Now, as you can see, we're we're traveling today. Uh, we're in Richmond, Virginia today. And we came here because my cousin had a baby shower on yesterday. Right. So, of course, she's pregnant now. Uh, so we came for the baby shower. Now, when mothers and you, you mothers out there, when you are pregnant, okay, with another person on the inside of you, they call that expecting. Um, so you're expecting one day that what's on the inside of you will no longer be on the inside of you. Because you can't hold a baby all your life. Mm, that's a good word right there. That came from the Holy Ghost. You cannot hold a baby. You cannot hold something on the inside of you your entire life. Eventually, the deadline is going to come. The time is going to come for you to deliver what you had on the inside of you. You 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 have something on the inside of you and you are expecting to deliver it. You're expecting whatever that has been deposited on the inside will one day come out. You're expecting. You look for God. You place your hope in God. But now you are expecting God to show up. You're expecting God to help you deliver what you need to deliver. You are expecting that thing to happen and manifest. You, you look for God. You place your hope in God. But now you are walking around in tiptoe expectation. Uh, what's to happen next? What's going to happen next? The next move in your life. OK, now now I have never I've never been pregnant before. <laughs> uh, 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 all the men have never been pregnant before. All right. But all of us have one thing in common is that we have all have experienced the expectation of something on the inside of us. It may not have been a living, breathing person. But there's been something on the inside of all of us, right? And we have walked around expecting to deliver it, expecting God to help us deliver and to birth out whatever we have on the inside of us. <laughs> and since, watch this, since we refuse to let it go, you believe and you expect God to help you. You expect God to be the, the ultimate doctor. Okay, He's the one that when you're in that birthing room, okay, when you when, when you get close to, you know how you get real close? Well, the women should know. <laughs> but when women get real close to birthing, okay, the pains get 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 stronger. Okay. And sometimes from what I hear, it gets a little bit unbearable. We are on the verge of delivering what's on the inside of you. You see, a lot of you may be going through some things and you're going through a whole lot of pain right now. You're going through so much right now. And you're like, where is all of this coming from? It hasn't always been like this. Well, you may just be on the verge of birthing out something. You may be on the verge of whatever has been deposited on the inside of you. You're on the you're on the table right now. You you on you on the bed right now, 
and you're about to birth out whatever is on the inside of you. And watch this. God is going to help you birth it out. <laughs> you look for God. You place your hope in God. But now you're expecting God to help you deliver it. Now, let's, let's go on further here. So David says, wait on the Lord. And then he says, watch this, be of good courage. Be of good courage. Okay. Uh, um, in other words, while you're waiting on God, be strong. Look for him. You place your hope in him. You're expecting God to show up. Be of good courage. Be strong. Be strong while you're waiting on him. Um, I had a friend and um, he would say like on difficult days, on bad days, whenever things didn't go his way, he called that a character building day, a character building day. In other words, whatever happened in that day, whatever he went through, it happened to make him stronger. It happened to, to build and to strengthen his character. So he will call them character building days. I didn't like it. Didn't feel good. But those days are character building days. You see, Grace Center, while we are waiting on God, be, be courageous. Be strong. Be of good courage. Okay. It could just be some character building days that you're going through. You know, things are not always going to be great. Some days it's going to seem like just the roof is caving in. Everything is just falling through. It's just a character building day. But be of good courage. Be strong with what you're going through. So David, he says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And then he says, he shall strengthen thine heart. He shall strengthen thine heart. Now, I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you have in your bank account. I don't care how big your Bible is, how many verses that you can quote. Okay. We all get weak from time to time. We all do. David says, be strong. But a lot of times we get weak along the way. Okay. It doesn't. Every day is, 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 is not a strong day. A lot of days are not productive days, it seems like. But David is letting us know that God is the one that can strengthen you. When we get weak and when we turn to God, he's the one that can give you the strength in which you need. He's the one that can do that. And he's the one that can pick you up when you're down. He's the one that can lift your head up when you have your head held low. It is God that can do that. David says that God is the one that can strengthen your heart. When it seems like you can't go another mile, you can't take another step. It is God. Don't feel out like getting out of bed one day. It is God that can strengthen you. You don't feel like talking to anyone that they just want to close the blinds and just, just call it a day. It is God that can strengthen you in those times of distress and worry and even panic a lot of times. When you're depressed and you have all these things happening in your life, God is the one that can strengthen your heart, that can help you, you, you be productive. Productive that can help you do the things that you need to do. It is the strength 
of God. So David, he says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Watch this. Then he comes back around again. Okay. Then he says again, he says, wait, I say on the Lord. He told them the first time, he told us the first time, he said, wait on the Lord. Okay. Then he's telling us to be strong and God is going to strengthen us and all of this. Then he comes back around again and says, wait, I say on the Lord. He said it before. He told us to be strong, be, you know, have, have courage and all of that. He said, God is going to strengthen you. But he came back again. He said, wait. I say on the Lord. So here you have David. He's reiterating to God's people to look for God, to hope uh, uh, in God and to expect God to show up. But he, he comes back and says, wait, I say on the Lord. It's that I say that gets me. He says, wait, I say on the Lord. It's almost like David is uh, making a referral to God. He said, wait, I say, I'm saying this. I've been through some things. I'm saying this. You need to wait on God. <laughs> you see, David went through some things in his life. And he's telling others, I've been through a lot. I'm here to tell you, you need to wait on God. I know I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. You need to wait on God. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say it a thousand times. You need to wait on the Lord. He's, he's making a referral to God. It's almost like if you go to a good mechanic, right? If they fix your car, they're not trying to... In a, a, a cheat you and tell you something uh, is wrong when it's really not wrong. Okay. And when you find that good mechanic, you're going to tell others, yo, I found this mechanic down the road. You need to go to that mechanic. Stay away from the others. But this mechanic is dependable. This mechanic is trustworthy. That's what David is doing here in the text. He's letting us know that we can trust God. He is, he's vouching for God. And many of us can vouch for God. Many of us can tell others about the goodness of the Lord, about what he has done, about what you have been through and how God has taken you out of that, that low place, that dark place in your life. David is coming back again. He's saying, wait, I say on the Lord. Many of us that have been through a thing or two in our lives, we can tell others about the goodness of God. We can share our testimonies about the faithfulness of God. David is letting us know, look, I haven't always dotted all my I's and crossed all my T's. But one thing I do know, that you can trust in God. So I'm telling you to just wait on him. Don't get ahead of him. Wait on him. I'm telling you this. From my own experience, you need to wait on him. I know you want to do this and, 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 and try to get ahead, but look, you're going to mess it up. Wait on him. Don't take matters to your own hands. But wait on God. But also, something interesting in the text is this. Um, the verse before this one, verse 13, is the one that almost made me shout when I read it. Verse 13 says this. It says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hmm. David is saying, man, I would have fainted. I would have passed out 
unless I believed in God. It would have been a wrap for me. I would have, I would have clocked out and called it a day. I would have, I would have faint, I would have been out of here, but I believe. I don't know if you have ever fainted before. I came close to fainting one time in the military. We was in formation and we was in, in the hot sun. It was hot that day. And I was at the front of the formation holding the flag up. And I forgot who was speaking that day, some commander or first sergeant, somebody was speaking that day. And I was like, please hurry up and, and finish. Whatever you're talking about right now, you need to finish. <laughs> because as I was standing there holding that flag, I got dizzy, uh, 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 things start to move and shift around me. Um, uh, things got blurry, got, it was like, things were turned to black and white. It was, that was a very scary day. Um, uh, I didn't think, thank God. Um, but after everything happened, I had to go sit down, drink water, and just relax myself. Here in the text, David is saying, I would have fainted. I would have passed out. I would have given up. I would have quit, okay, if I had not believed in the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the land of the living. I, I would have fainted. I would not have made it if I had not believed in him. I would not have made it. If I did not put my trust in him, I would not have made it to this point to tell you to wait on God, to be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I, I will not be here to tell you about this if I had passed out and quit and if God did not show up for me. I don't know who I'm talking to out there today, but how many of you out there would have you? It seemed like you have you almost didn't make it. <laughs> you almost didn't make it, but God showed up. You almost fainted. <laughs> you almost threw in the towel, but. Since you place your, your trust in God and since you believe in God, you saw God make a way just for you. David is letting us know if it wasn't, was not for the goodness of God, if I didn't believe in him, if I did not place my trust in him, I don't know where I would have been. I know I can say that. I don't know where I would have been and where I would be without the goodness of God. It's almost like David is giving us a testimony here in this song. He's letting us know to believe and to trust in God no matter what. Whatever your what is, don't stop believing and trusting in God. That's how David is encouraging us on today. He's talking to God's people. He's talking to us who follow God every day. And he's telling us to wait on him. Place your trust in him. You can believe God. I can vouch for God. He's doing a referral back to God and letting us know, place your trust in him. Wait on God. Wait on the Lord. In due time, at the right time, he's going to show up for you. I'm closing now. Today, I just want to encourage you on today to hurry up <laughs> and wait. You may not like waiting, but sometimes in life, we all have to. And a lot of us, we're in that waiting room. Waiting for our name to be called. Say, hey, you up next. <laughs> so and so, you're up next. We're waiting for our name to be called. But while we're in that waiting room, 
as David is telling us here in the text. He's saying, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait. I'll tell you again, wait. On the Lord. <laughs> That's the word for today. No matter what you're going through, hurry up and just simply wait. It may not happen on your timetable, but just hurry up and wait. I know you want to happen like yesterday, but hurry up and wait. I know you have all these things you want to do in your life right now, but hurry up and simply wait. The virtual doors of the church are open at this time. The invitation is extended. Perhaps you're not saved on today. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. But you want to receive him today. Um, you heard about Jesus. Um, you hear your grandmama, your grandfather, your your neighbors talk about Jesus, but you don't know him for yourself. But today is the day that you're saying, I want to receive him on today. I want to, I want to place my trust in God. If you're not saved, and if you don't know where you would be when you die, whether it's going to be hell or heaven, but you want to make sure that it's heaven. You can receive Jesus today. Despite what others may say, Jesus is the only way to God. Doesn't matter what people may believe, them believing in something doesn't make it true. Jesus is the only way to God. So if you're out there today, if you are ready to receive Jesus in your life, you can say this simple prayer along with me. You can say, dear God, thank you for thinking about me. Thank you for having me on your mind. On today, I place my trust in God. So I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus came, that Jesus died, and that Jesus rose from the grave. If you have prayed that prayer, there are angels rejoicing. There's a celebration in heaven right now. Because you prayed that prayer. And if you have prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. Please connect with us so we can connect back with you. We would love to hear from you. For all others, if you have any special prayer requests, you can uh, let us know as well. You can either comment in the comment section or send us a private message. We would love to stand in the gap and pray with you and for you. Amen. All right. This is the time in the service. It is tithes and offering time. We have several different ways in which you may be able to give. Uh, if you go to our website, the Grace Center, G A dot Org. Click on that give link and it has all of the different ways in which you may be able to give. Uh, once again, that's the Grace Center, GA.org. Uh, click on that give link. Uh, it will show you all the ways in which you may be able to give, whether it's through the site, through our cash app, which is the Grace Center GA. Um, you can download our Givelify app and give that way. Or you can mail your checks or money orders to us as well. All right. Well, hey, I hope that this message has blessed you on today. I hope that you have learned something or just been encouraged by this word on today. Um, and this is a word that we all can, can be encouraged by. No matter who you may be, this word is a word for all of us. And I hope. It has blessed you on today. All right, let us now pray as we are dismissed. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you're doing in our lives. Lord, I pray for those out there who have 
given their life to Jesus Christ on today, I pray that you will connect them with a local church that will help them uh, in this new walk, in this new journey with you. Uh, so help them with their questions and the things that they are seeking from you, Father. I pray for all the others who have special prayer requests, which you know what they are. I pray that you will meet the needs of your people and even bless them with some of their wants as well. But I pray that your will is done in their lives. So bless your people on today. Bless the tithes and the offerings that have been given. We pray that it will be increased and multiplied. Bless the ones who gave. Uh, I pray that you will multiply uh, blessings back to them. For the ones who wanted to give but just did not have it, I pray that you will bless them as well. But thank you for this time together. Thank you for this word you have given to us. As we leave this place, we'll never ever leave your presence. Please go before us and make every crooked place straight in our lives. We give you all of the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praises in Jesus Christ's name, in which we do pray. Amen. All right, everyone, until next week, I love you. Be safe. Take care.